awesome chat is brought to you by sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com and listeners like you support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. Mike Sorg here at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Mayhem Studio, where we talk to some awesome people in and around Pittsburgh doing awesome things in technology, video games, podcasting, creating movies, all kinds of fun stuff. Please check out all of our past interviews on awesomecast.net. Support the show on patreon.com slash awesomecast. And please subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course the video versions on YouTube and Facebook for the Awesome Cast. With us, we got it. We got we got a captive here in the studio. Here, he was on for the Awesome Cast this week, and we're like, hey, let's, let's have a chat while we have you down here. Kenny Chen is joining us. He is the project manager over at Ascender, and we've talked with Ascender before, <laughs> of course. Yeah, so, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. You, you thought we could have talked to somebody else when I was asking for Ascender, but I got you on here anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. So, so Kenny, you know, as we mentioned on other shows, uh, you know, you're somebody I see around all these projects and everything, all these events around the city from startup weekends to events around the center to the AIX prize that we've discussed on the show before. Mm-hmm. Um, like, how, how did you get here? <laughs> how did I get <laughs> like, here? I, I, have you always been in like kind of a technology kind of mindset, um, mm-hmm. you know, or is this just kind of the field that you kind of fell into with, with, with your uh, skills here. Yeah, I um, I would say I haven't actually been very deeply involved in any tech scene as a whole uh, since maybe about a year and a half or two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and my whole career has mostly been jumping from sector to sector in different cities and, and places. Uh, super quick background. I grew up, um, I was born in Wisconsin, grew up in Las Vegas, um, went to school out in Berkeley, studied psychology, um, and worked in DC, San Francisco, Taiwan, wow. Hong Kong, um, always doing different stuff. Um, so, you know, DC interning for the department of transportation, I'm actually driving there tomorrow and uh, doing a day trip and coming back. Um, uh, did some stuff in real estate, in um, in a lot in nonprofits, um, and more you know civic engagement type of work, um, mm-hmm. working with social enterprises, um, with universities, education, research, um, all of that kind of space. And I've always been interested in cross sector collaboration, so very intentionally tried to get that you know public, private, nonprofit, research, education, media, you know whole gamut of things. Mm-hmm. And um, by the time you know, so so I came to Pittsburgh about two and a half years ago for the Coro Fellowship in Public Affairs, um, and during that time, I got to the point where the only thing that I had left was to get involved more in the startup realm, um, both from the entrepreneurial side, but then also with the accelerators and incubators. And so I had the good fortune of having avenues like Startup Weekend and the different competitions to scratch those entrepreneurial itches and involvement was the product of one of those Startup Weekends. Um, And then to also get hired by Ascender, uh, which was Thrill Mill at the time. Um, And they, I'd bumped, um, I'd crossed paths with them a bunch of times, just with all of these different things that were going on, um, and you know, eventually, yeah, it made sense for for me to join that team. And I think at at the end of the day, it's it's just a matter of um, you know, when you look at the current environment and how much every single industry and people's lives are being disrupted by new emerging technologies and whatnot. It's hard not to get swept up in it, especially if you've got a good appetite for knowledge and curiosity. So since you've, since you've been kind of involved with this sector, um, you know, it seems that uh, Pittsburgh appears to be thriving. You know, and in a different level than you know, typically, uh, you know, we talk about on the on the show. Uh, uh, you know, San Francisco and New York are kind of the place if you want to start something. But there seems to be a pretty good community that you seem to be fairly involved in f- around that. 
Oh, definitely. And uh, I think Innovation Works just came out with a one of their annual reports that they do with Ernst and Young, um, and it's showing the trends of the past five years from 2012 to 2016. And there is definitely very consistent um, growth and momentum as far as the number of people that are taking on, um, uh, that are starting, you know, companies that are getting funding, um, you know, that are just being involved in the ecosystem as a whole. And at least in comparison to the other cities that I've lived and worked in, um, what really makes Pittsburgh stand out is the culture and attitude around the people. Um, so, you know, the, the whole post-industrial set of challenges after the steel industry collapse uh, caused all, all sorts of problems, but um, it's also provided this sense of pride and unity and um, communities and people that are very, very willing to support any kind of idea that they think has legs and mm -hmm. is worth putting behind. And there's this sense of um, this pervasive sense of humility that people carry with them as well, where hardly any CEO in the city, um, even for a Fortune 500 company, um, they won't think of themselves as being too big to have a 15, 30 minute meeting with a, an upstart entrepreneur or, or someone who gives them a good reason to have um, that and even event sponsorship and corporate engagement and those kinds of things. There's an appetite for it that you won't see in other cities like San Francisco or New York where everyone's already been there and done that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not doing 50 million or a hundred million dollar deals, you're not really worth talking to. Um, I mean, Pittsburgh still has a good set of challenges as well. Um, we're kind of right in the middle between um, that kind of first tier and second tier uh, big player metropolitan regions and then that rise of the rest realm. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we are um, number 40 out of the top 40 uh, metropolitan areas when it comes um, to that kind of entrepreneurial investment deal flow type of but still stuff. a big deal because we were nowhere near the top 40 before right absolutely so i mean that's that's a that's an elite 40 mm -hmm. yeah i mean when when you look at the trajectory that the city was taking following you know 1979 mm -hmm. and whatnot um to have been able to reinvent um itself like in numerous times uh that's there's a lot of achievements that the city should be very very proud of and i think people do um the city a disservice uh by trying to compare it to silicon valley or, or new york or boston mm -hmm. um you know at least on like flat direct metrics um when it's it's experienced really exciting growth percentage wise and, and whatnot that mm -hmm. is, is hard to compare to and, and certainly a city that's kind of dealing with you know consequences of some of the fast growth you know mm -hmm. and and i know talking with your colleagues at ascender you know trying to uh kind of circumvent like the issues we see in silicon valley like mm -hmm. the, i guess we can call the social uh, issues that they have out there mm -hmm. uh with that big growth around everything going on um and i know you're involved with ascender you guys are kind of looking at a different model with that mm -hmm. um to you know kind of not incubate. I keep wanting to use the words incubate, but it's not what you guys are doing. Well, exactly. I, I mean, we that that is a core part of yeah. um, our the work that we do. But what is what does set us apart from most other incubators is, um, I mean, first of all, we're we're nonprofit. We're a five hundred one c three nonprofit uh, that was largely supported and, and founded in a community and economic development space. Mm -hmm. The um, the impetus behind it being the fact that we saw, or the founders saw, a gap in the the ecosystem of resources for early stage entrepreneurs, whether it's first time entrepreneurs or students that were coming out of the universities that didn't have a place to go, or they had good ideas, but um, nowhere near the kind of support that they need to actually take a viable shot at it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, incubation in this case is providing um, 
is lowering that barrier to entry and offering the space, you know, a bit of capital and a lot of connections and resources for people. So you've been, like I said, involved with a lot of pro- a lot of events, a lot of seen a lot of projects come through. Um, and so I think especially around the, the the startup weekends, it's always interesting to see what what pops yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything that really you know whether it was something that you even got through got through in one or something that didn't that really surprised you that you saw as like kind of a company idea out there the the ideas themselves well um one that i've been extremely impressed with um is behavior um they were um they were one of the companies um one of the teams uh i mean that's what they started as that came to the artificial intelligence hackathon that i that i put together um early in january so not even three months ago Mm -hmm. and this was part of a team building sprint that i was trying to put together for that artificial intelligence x prize um thinking hey pittsburgh should be well represented for this competition considering how much of a of an ai leader we are Mm -hmm. um, and are recognized as around the world and so um behavior was um this idea that a lawyer uh, james two um, I originally flagged him as a mentor. I thought his legal his legal expertise would be valuable to share with other teams. And on that night of, he he was just saying, "Hey, you know what? I've actually had this idea swimming in the back of my mind for a little while. Would you mind if I pitched?" Um, and the whole idea was utilizing wearables and artificial intelligence, predictive analytics to um, give. Um, uh, people um, in like an addiction recovery space or post-incarceration um, um, the behavioral outcome um, area where you know they're opting in to have support from a, whether it's a parole officer, a therapist, that kind of a thing, to have better information about their own behaviors. Um, and to get the necessary support um, when they're at risk of relapse. And so they ended up being one of our four winners for the night. They incorporated as an LLC, I think like three days after the competition ended, uh, they went, they um, took part in two other startup competitions that I was a part of, um, uh, didn't place in one of them, won the next one. And are now um, we just inc- we just accepted them into Ascender as one of our incubatees. So in less than three months, from like pure idea phase to winning, um, I think you know more. I think it was at least three thousand dollars in in prize money, mm-hmm. um, and being a part of this X Prize competition, building out um, you know a pretty a pretty solid team. And being on track for um, an additional five thousand dollars from a sender and a space to work out of. There's not a lot of places right now where a company can follow that kind of a timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and such a, such an insanely growing space as, as AI too, right? Because I mean, I, every time you know uh, attending the the final pitches uh, night and seeing seeing behavior win and 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 uh, kind of you know. To me, AI is up above like my, you know, my technical, you mm-hmm. know, and it just seems like this kind of unknown, mm-hmm. you know, versus a yeah, oh, we can make a company that does this, pulls this technology, does this. like it feels like we're absolutely creating the technology as it goes, and of course, you know, this is. Uh, if I understand the competition correctly, kind of you know has the asset of IBM Watson around it, right? As as a resource and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but it just seems like you know, it, this is some next level stuff here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people are con- um, comparing AI to um, electricity mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. industrial revolution, um, steam power, all of those kinds of big paradigm shift shifting technologies, um, and yeah, this will have a similar scale of impact, if not greater, than those, I believe. On your thoughts, a little bit of a tough question here, maybe. Sure. I, I, the discussion these days about, you know, what's going to happen to our jobs when AI takes over, the self-driving cars if they stop wrecking in Arkansas, uh, you know, or whatever <laughs> the case may be uh, as the news coming out lately. But, uh, you know, wh- where do you see that as, you know, are we concerned about these uh, 
is it more exciting the opportunities these are or is it more scary what this will do society wise to jobs and things like that yeah i think it's a it's definitely a combination of both mm -hmm. um from the technologist side from the side of anyone who isn't immediately at risk of having a big part of their lives um you know fall out from under them because of artificial intelligence um you know there's there's a there's really so much potential um coming out and for for people who do have some level of flexibility i mean really um i think in the us some 36 percent of jobs i think um are highly at risk of being or will likely be automated mm -hmm. over the course of i think it's maybe the next 10 and, years and that's not just ai that's that's robotics mm -hmm. and things that are already happening absolutely um and i think the the consensus from a lot of experts is that um you know it's it's not as much of a thing um to worry about in in macroscopic terms um, because automation, artificial intelligence, those kinds of things are going to probably, at least in their estimation, create as many jobs as they displace. Um, the challenge is, and, and you know, this has been the case for decades and centuries, you know, when Ford conveyor belts and those kinds of things, when robotics were introduced to assembly lines, um, people were just as much, if not more, up in arms about losing their jobs, but it ended up shifting. The difference is that the timeline for that innovation was a lot longer. You could have an entire generation of people that just stopped being manual car assembly workers. Here, that timeline has been reduced to like 10 or 5 or you know, far shorter years. Very few people are spending their whole lives in one industry. And so say you know, the trucking industry, where there's 2 million people in the US that mm -hmm. drive um, uh, trucks around. And I think Budweiser already has um, successfully delivered you know, autonomously driven mm -hmm. trucks from one place to another. So, which is uh, with Auto, which was a company that they purchased uh, for the self-driving car mm -hmm. uh, technology, right? And so, all of those people, um, unless we have a kind of education retraining um, type of a system in place, or the security nets um, underneath for their unemployment um, benefits and whatnot, they're going to have a really tough time. Um, and I think. And so this is one of many questions that I and a couple other hundred um, people are going to be trying to resolve in the first annual AI for Good Summit. Um, this is a, a three-day long conference being held in Geneva um, in June, um, co-hosted by XPRIZE and the United Nations. Um, and so the, the whole idea is to convene AI experts, policymakers, and people who are thinking a lot in this space to try to come up with at least the initial craftings of some international um, ethical engineering principles and legal, um, legal slash legislative frameworks for regulating these things. It's awesome. Well, there's there's a little bit you can hit him up on his Twitter about. <laughs> there you go around AI and everything. A lot of really cool things going on. We talked about on this week uh, a lot of the events coming up around his center and everything like that. Uh, where can people find out more about what's going on between most of the stuff you're working with here? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> a I lot mean, of places, huh? <laughs> uh, I I haven't been doing as good of a job of posting things on Twitter, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll usually tweet or retweet um, the main things that, that I'm working on. Um, and uh, people are welcome to, to friend me on Facebook and stuff as well. I'll usually invite um, all of the my Pittsburgh network um, to the big stuff. Um, yep. Other, yep, I see that every once in a while on Facebook. Yep. Oh, good. good. <laughs> okay. Um, otherwise, I think there there are some really great newsletters um, mm -hmm. that go out in um, in the Pittsburgh area that cover a lot of the things that I'm involved in and everyone else. Um, I used to really rely on Boomtom, um, which was I, I know I'm slaughtering the pronunciation of it. Boomtan. Um, Boomtan. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
uh, more nasal, more nasal. Boom tan. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> um, I, I don't know what I what I said, but that was um, <laughs> being run by the guys at Figment and mm-hmm. would just give you like a three month um, roadmap of what was being done, and they would send it out weekly. I don't think they they're doing it anymore, um, but we've at least got Start Now PGH, mm-hmm. um, which is a weekly like tech um, innovation newsletter, and then Citizen City has their weekly dose of good. Uh, newsletter and probably between the two i get um most of my events are are published there and then i find uh, most of my you know event or initiative discovery there as well awesome well thank you so much for uh hanging out with us for another awesome chat here after the show here uh uh please go check out everything going out on with the sender uh, uh with the uh, xprize ai here in pittsburgh uh you know a lot of great stuff a lot of great innovation you know it's a reason why you listen to a lot of talk tech podcasts you hear things like carnegie mellon and 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 and, and you know pittsburgh companies uh coming out there's a lot of really cool stuff really uh uh you know innovative people kind of uh applying to this stuff and kenny's one of them making things pushing things along here in pittsburgh <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes. yes. Right. So right. thank you for joining right. us. And please best. check him out. Check out everything else going on at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the show. Please support us on Patreon if you like the kind of discussions that we're having here. If there's anybody you think we should have on the show, please let us know at awesomecast on Twitter, uh, Facebook, awesomecast, or awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Thank you to Kenny, our awesome guest. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.